think you're you big and badass? I'm big and badass more than you, brother. You owe me $300. No, no, you Then get the f out of my store. Don't, don't, to don't touch it. Don't it's time to go. Okay, you're lucky you got somebody here. Oh, man, am I lucky. Yeah. It's my lucky day. Hardcore Pond is no stranger to the wild world of rude, or should we say eccentric, customers. Hey, I need to speak to somebody up in here, man. This is wrong for up all up on this. Man, come on now. Come on. Hey. So prepare yourselves, folks, because here comes another one storming in with all the subtlety of a wrecking ball. Poor Les just happened to be the lucky one on duty to deal with this fiery fella. Hey, you the owner? Check this out, man. I'm to turn around that paper there. What's up with that? 25 bucks, man. Come on. Man, step your back, man. Step back. Come on. You want to talk to me? Les's expression was a mix of shock and awe as he struggled to find the right words while the guy launched into his tirade. Orderly, I'm speaking English yet say. You get it? Yeah? Duff? Sign language? What's up? Amidst the chaos, Les channels his inner Zen master. You don't think yell at me? Man, we're looking at that dog, man. Come on. Stop yelling. What's about to make me jump over this counter in a minute? Now we all know the golden rule of pawn shops, bring a receipt if you want to return or exchange an item. But surprise, surprise, this guy arrived empty handed. Who would have guessed? You want to be treated like a gentleman, act like one. And? Show me the receipt. I ain't got no receipt, man. I will be more than happy to exchange it for you when you bring me the receipt. What, am I supposed to carry it with me? So kudos to Les for keeping his cool in the eye of the storm. Give me my money back now. I can't have that. That's gonna mess up my system and then you're gonna be buying me a new system and a game. Having spent a lifetime in the pawn business, Les knew just how to handle folks like this. Show him the door. Let's walk over to the refund department. Follow me. I don't know if we did it. I don't know if he did it. I don't know if he really bought it from us. But because he was so irate, he had to go. As Mr. Crazy finally realized he was being escorted out, it's a good thing the trusty security guy was there to wrangle him. We're gonna go right here to the refund. Hey, I ain't going over there. What do you want? I got Get out of here, man. You going. Man, you ready? Man, I ain't going you ready? Man. Let's go. 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 Bring the receipt. I don't like this place. We don't like you either. Man. There is an unwritten law at American Jewelry and Loan. Look, but don't touch. At least, not without asking first. Well, it seems our friend here either missed the memo or simply did not care. Hey, hey, sir, don't touch it. Sir, sir, what? put it down. If there's anything you want to see, we'll be more than happy to show you, sir. I'm just looking, thanks. Les stepped in to remind him of the sacred rule, but did our touchy-feely friend take the hint? Not a chance, folks. Not just don't wall. pick him up. I'll be Can more I see the price on it? Yeah, it's 300 hours. Hey, sir, just leave it down there. But I'm trying to, how am I going to see if it's going to work? And this is where the infamous less transformation takes place. It's precisely why they have the hands-off policy. Can I just tell you not If to I'm going to buy something from sir, you, that's I want why I asked you. Look that's why if I'm going to sell you something, aren't you going to ask to look at it? Aren't you going to touch it? You'd think the guy would have the decency to back down after being called out, but this is Hardcore Pawn, folks. Home of unreasonable yelling and customer chaos. You owe me $300 I'm not a little kid. Talk. First of all, I'm not a little kid. You no, got you're just an ass. You got a piece of to that I pick up. I told you me. not to touch uh, it. You know, I'm not one of your kids. You're going to raise your voice. You're all badass when you're back there and he's over so here's a word to the wise don't mess with lesser his trusty security guy unless you're reaching for a one-way ticket to the sidewalk I'll come out right out there you think i give it you think you're you all big, big and badass i'm big and badass more than you brother you owe me 300 hours no, no, you then get the out of my store it's don't, time to don't go. touch it don't it's time to go perhaps our feisty friend should trade pawn shops for anger management classes you know, just a thought. Hey, you're lucky you got somebody here. Oh man, am I lucky. Yeah. It's my lucky day. You and this store. Yeah, right. Oh boy, just another day at the office. I mean, if your office is a battleground for customer showdowns. I hope that board haunts your ass for the rest of your life. I hope you can never eat pigs again. Broke my board's talk. Ah, the calm before the storm. Meet the customers who play nice until they, well, don't. Hello. Yeah. I'm good, how are you? I'm doing good. I was looking for some gold earrings. You are in the right department. A pleasant lady strolled in on the hunt for some earrings. I mean, surely this encounter has to be smooth sailing, right? I see what I like right here. Okay. Oh, these are nice. Yeah, I think I like these. These are 14 carat. I like these. Those are 525. 
She wasn't thrilled with the price, but we all know there's usually some wiggle room or potential for an exchange. What about an exchange? These for those? Well, what we can do is I can take those and apply money towards these is what I could do. All right. Let me just weigh them up for you, okay? All right then, thank you. Eager to assist, Ashley took the lady's earrings, did her expert appraisal thing, and then came back with the results. Okay, so what I can do for you today, I can apply $40 towards these. Yeah, you could almost hear the sound of the ticking time bomb. I paid $500 for those. What do you mean? You can't do an exchange? Hmm, trust the professional or throw a fit. Yeah, you can probably guess which option our lady chose. Okay, I can't give you $500. Why you can't? Because it's not worth $500. Oh, today. now you're going to tell me my earrings is not worth $500. But this piece right here is. Despite the lady insisting her earrings were worth more, Ashley stood her ground, confident in her assessment. Her earrings don't weigh nearly as much as the ones that she wants. There's no way I can do an even exchange. I know how much I paid for these. Okay, those weigh under four grams. I don't give a damn what you say. I know how much these cost. over four I know how much these cost, boo-boo. Ashley maintained her professionalism and politeness, but a single snarky comment from the disgruntled lady flipped the script. I know how much Just because you screamed nope, that they're right, gonna get you more money, boo boo. Yeah. Miss boo boo to me, okay? Well, don't tell me what to do. I'm telling you. And here comes our unsung hero, the security guy, always there in the nick of time. Oh, now you're gonna touch me? He's gonna tell you, you where know, to walk. Is oh, hell with you. He gotta tell me. Of course, no dramatic exit would be complete without some collateral damage along the way. This is bull yeah, but that was good. Pose made you well, Bye, me. Tell me my ain't worth what I'm supposed to be getting. So the wolf in sheep's clothing strikes again. Who would have thought? What? You know, at the pawn shop, we are used to seeing all sorts of junk and occasionally some valuable items. But have you ever seen someone bring in animals? Well, you're about to. Oh, yeah, oh. watch out. Watch out. We're coming. Hi. You take Woo! them? <laughs> okay. Let's go. Okay. I'll meet you right out there. That's right. A horse, a pony, and a donkey. All wandering around the pawn shop. Safe to say it caused quite a stir, with everyone taking turns riding the animals, snapping pictures, and overall having a blast. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. This is the one we need to buy. It's not that far of a fall. Move your ass! Get careful, the lady who brought them in wanted to sell the animals, so it was time to talk money. But would the pawn shop crew actually buy one? What are the prices? What are the prices in that? Uh, he's at 35,000. 35,000? Yeah. He's at 2,500. What do you want? What do I want for him? 25. Ashley wanted the pony. I don't know why she'd want the pony, but she wanted the pony. Ashley was willing to make an offer for the horse, but would it be enough? I'll offer 2,000. I'll go, no. Let's go up no, 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 no. Why are you starting at 2,000? Then you're going to split it at 250? Give her 1,000 bucks. bucks. Would you take 1,000? I'd take 1,500. Split the difference. 1250, yeah. And after some haggling, Ashley became the proud owner of a horse. How about 1250 and you include the board? One month. Two months. One. I'll yeah. split the second month with you. 125? Yeah. Okay. There was even a little performance from the pony inside the store. Good. Nice. He does tricks. Yay. <laughs> you know, talk about short, sweet, and utterly unexpected. So a man brought a ring to the shop, hoping to sell it for a decent price. I got a nice ring. I spent over a thousand dollars for this ring, and I'm yeah. trying to see if I can get at least two hundred for it. Ashley examined it and determined its value was far from two hundred bucks. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to help you with two hundred, but if eighty-five will help you out today. And then brace yourself for the unexpected twist. What can I get for this? Can you give me something for this? Before I know it, he pulls out his retainer with a gold tooth and wanted to throw up. Ooh. Well, Ashley certainly didn't see it coming. She was understandably creeped out, but decided to take the bit of gold. Creeps me out. But I would take it. It is gold. So yes, it's gold. Ten but bucks on that. Give me that. Yeah, we've seen it once, but seriously, keep that thing in your mouth, buddy. He takes it out of his mouth and puts it directly on the counter. Like, he kept putting it in and out and in and out. 
Disgusting. Despite the bizarre encounter, they managed to strike a deal. All right, so the ring is going to be 80. Right. And the two's going to be 10. Okay, that's cool. go with 90. Yeah, okay, is we that can cool? do that. Yeah, we do it. Meet me right over there. Okay. Now, the employee behind the counter was understandably shocked by the sight of a gold retainer. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Okay. 20, 40, 60, 80, and 90. You're all set. Thank you for doing business with us, okay? Thank you, babe. All right, see ya. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, we have witnessed plenty of strange encounters, but this one might take the cake. My partner right here, Robert, we want to pawn this. Excuse me? You're what now? You're who? My partner, Robert, right here. Here's a person talking to an invisible friend, but I didn't see him. It appeared that Robert, the invisible friend, had opinions on the evaluation process, and Les played along like a pro salesman. So, so what do you think about this? Be cool, Robert, be cool. Robert is very cool. Be quiet, Robert. But things quickly escalated when Les explained that he couldn't give them any more for the item. Yeah, that's not weird at all. But Robert was no help at all. I think it's really cool, but I can't give you anything for it because it's not silver. You can't give me anything for it. No. What do you mean you can't give me nothing for this? I'm telling you, this is Robert. Robert. Tell him. Tell him, Robert. You know, you can't help but feel this situation won't end calmly. Y'all told me. I didn't tell you anything. On TV, they say that this pine store give you $200. So have you seen Steve doing our commercials? Now, the burning question. Who is Steve? Who is Steve? Steve's my buddy. Robert, meet Steve. Steve, Robert. Steve. He does our commercials. Les tried to defuse the tension, even calling his buddy Steve. But it was time for security to step in. I need to talk to the boss man. Excuse me. I wanted to get this guy out of here without causing a scene. I had Hook pretend to be the owner to try to have him follow Hook outside. And he talking about he can't give me nothing for this. What the f is that? And that is when the full extent of this man's craziness was revealed. I'll go to the outside. I gotta look at him oh. a little more better. All right. That I ain't leaving. I ain't leaving. I'm not. I'm not leaving, man. Until I get some money. That man, let me go. Get your hands off me. Get your hands off me. You know what? Yeah. Though the main instigator was removed, Robert was still inside the store, and Les courteously escorted the invisible friend out. I got him for you. Oh, you got Robert fucking. Here you go, here you go. Yeah. Here you go. F this. F this. I'm not right. coming back no more All to right, your damn thank you. store. Holy f It's a good thing Robert wasn't left behind, but maybe, you know, just maybe he should reconsider his choice of companions. Have you ever wondered what happens when desperation meets cunning, when audacity goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with seasoned skeptics, and when the simply absurd shakes hands with the hilariously bizarre? Well, let's find out. When you walk into a pawn shop, you might expect a bit of drama. What you might not expect, though, is to walk smack bang into the middle of a convoluted guitar caper. And this is exactly what happened when a music teacher breezed into American Jewelry and Loan asking for a very specific guitar. Our hero less instantly smelled a rat. Or perhaps that was just the scent of old guitar strings. My name is Vaughn. It's a pleasure to meet you, Your man. name is what? Vaughn. Vaughn? Yeah, I'm a music teacher, and I loaned my guitar to one of my students. When I talked to her mother, she ended up letting me know that they put it in a pawn shop up at American Jewelry and Loan. Okay. Either way, when the man spun a tale about how one of his students' parents pawned a guitar he'd lent them, Les knew something was amiss. See that bass right there? It's a Fender. Did you make a police report? No. Despite claiming it was stolen, the man was curiously reluctant to report the stolen bass to the police. Otherwise, I would have to sell it back to you at retail. If you bring me the police report, then all your obligation would be is to pay me what we paid her. Why well, do I have to pay you anything? Because we have money invested in it, and how do I know that that's your guitar? Now, it's pretty hard to tell who the real scammer was in this story. However, our guitar hero eventually found himself being escorted out of the shop. Why can't you just go give it to me now? Because I already told you it was mine. I've been playing in Detroit for over 15 years and you can't give me my back? Now it's time to go. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, minute, come on now. Let's have a good day. Hey, hey look, let's have a good you day. Get me up. And as he left, he shouted out that he was the next Rick James. Hey, y'all got Rick Ross in security. I'm the next damn Rick James, bitch! No, you're not. Right up here in Detroit. Hell I mean, yes. Rick oh, James okay. in the house. All right, you know, with a plot that far-fetched, perhaps he's better suited for a career in, um, I don't know, fiction writing? 
Imagine the audacity of strolling into a shop to return an item, of course without a receipt, and then claiming to have been scammed. Our friend here tried just that, walking into the store with an iPhone and a tail that would make Shakespeare scratch his head. Just got this phone that I bought here like two, three days ago, and this don't work. The camera don't work. It keep freezing and like that. Did you download a camera function? No, it clearly got a camera. Why would I have to download it? Just asking. He claimed he'd bought the phone from this very shop two days prior and now wanted a refund. I need a new phone, dog. Okay, you got your receipt? No, I ain't got it with me. I ain't bring it. Just get me another phone that's all i'm asking for okay his plot was about as convincing as a reality tv star claiming they're not doing it for the fame as soon as you give me that receipt i can see what i can do for you i don't have my receipt i just clearly told you that man clearly you told me that when he couldn't produce a receipt he shifted gears blaming a hapless employee and turning bitter faster than a cup of unsweetened cocoa yeah you you sold me this phone right here you didn't buy that from us yes i clearly did thank you very much i appreciate you coming on over here you can go back to selling that computer no hold Hold on, no, guys. no, no, don't touch him and let him go. To say he failed spectacularly would be putting it mildly. Can you go show him how it works? Uh, take a picture out in the parking lot. Don't touch my phone, show, dog. show him how the phone works outside. I'm gonna be back. I'm coming for my money. Is that clear? Send me a picture of the receipt from your phone. Okay, now let's enter the suspense thriller corner of Hardcore Pawn, where it's not always the customers that are suspicious. You know that sinking feeling when the person you least expect turns out to be the villain? Well, that's exactly what happened when our favorite security guard, Joel Big Joe Shannon, was caught on hidden camera with his hand in the proverbial cookie jar. After various items began to mysteriously vanish in the store, Les went all Sherlock Holmes and set a trap, and his bait, a shiny diamond ring and a hidden camera poised to capture the miscreant. The waiting game began and sure enough, the next day the ring had done its disappearing act. Just imagine the shock and disbelief when the footage revealed Big Joe as the culprit. Holy Our head of security, Joe's the crook. Oh my god. Denials ensued, with Les even arguing that their burly head of security couldn't possibly be behind it. However, when Joe owned up and produced a treasure trove of stolen jewelry worth over $7,000 from his pocket, the truth was laid bare. The detectives call in uniformed officers to put the cuffs on him. And then he reaches into his pocket and pulls out an assortment of jewelry worth over $7,000. I almost had a f Attack. Now this moment was as jaw-dropping as a plot twist in the blockbuster thriller. But then again, when has Hardcore Pawn ever been predictable? You know, there's a fine line between the comedy club and Hardcore Pawn, especially when our cast of characters are a colorful blend of absurdity and theatrics. For instance, take the man who waltzed in trying to pawn a Cabbage Patch Kid doll for a Benjamin Franklin. What are you looking to do with that? I'm looking to get $100 for it to help me out. The surreal part? He was the spitting image of the doll. It was like watching a life-sized Cabbage Patch Kid trying to hawk his mini-me. How about $10? What is $10 gonna do me? Even at $100, what the hell is that gonna do for you? $100 will help me move my so out, it'll feed where? my dogs if I have to, wherever I find. So the $10 will be a good start. What the do you mean it's gonna be a good start? When he didn't get the hefty sum he was asking for, he flipped out, evidently taking offense when the owner unceremoniously tossed his pint-sized doppelganger onto the floor. No, we aren't done talking business. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm up in here talking business. Either you're and you're up in here disrespecting wait, wait, wait. me, trying to hand my shit back to me. If I were to do this, that's disrespecting you. What the is your problem? Pick that up. Pick it up. Yeah, imagine being so emotionally invested in your doll's well-being. It's almost as if he was the Cabbage Patch Kid all grown up. You want to treat me like a bitch? You're going to be the bitch. Pick my doll up. How are you going to disrespect me? I just was all now. You're I just disrespecting us by screaming in front of all of our customers. I really don't give a about any one of these mother <laughs> customers up in this mother. How did he feel when his miniature twin hit the deck? Betrayed? Wounded? We'll never know. What we do know is that the combination of his antics and the uncanny resemblance made for one hilariously unforgettable episode. Take your and take it home with you. We're not interested. Oh, we're coming from the man who threw my doll on the floor. I'm scared. All right, let's go. No, I ain't going. Who the are you? Who are you? Don't, don't, don't you put your hands on me. You know, they say art imitates life, but this was a case of life imitating a, uh, the Cabbage Patch Kid. No, you out the door. 
out the door. Don't you put your hands on me. Don't grab me like that. Ah, get off me. Everybody see this harassment, bitch. Get your hands off me. Next up, we got the heart-wrenching season 5 finale of Hardcore Pawn. So picture this. Rich Pyle, a manager who had been with the store for two decades and had won the hearts of viewers since day one, gets the boot. You were on the floor doing nothing. I can't believe after 25 years of being loyal to you, I've been more loyal than your own kids have to you. You know what, Rich? F*** you. Get out of the store. Really? Really. It was pretty much like a beloved character being written off your favorite sitcom. But plot twist, Rich swallows his pride, returns to apologize, and is welcomed back by Les with a stern warning to toe the line. As fate would have it, Rich got his golden chance to shine when a teen swaggered into the store, toting some microphones Rich suspected were hot property. However, he smelled a rat when the kid spun a yarn about how he had gotten the mics. They just threw them out in the crowd and I picked them up. So they threw these things out into the crowd and you just happened to catch one? So at what point did they actually take this off of the, the rack and put it nicely inside of this thing? Now who in their right mind chucks brand new microphones into a crowd? It simply didn't add up. And as it turns out, the mics had been swiped from a local club the previous night. It looks like these microphones are stolen. Some of my best friends are owners, so I'm going to give them a call and see if they're missing any equipment. I'm from American Jewelry. I have a gentleman down here who is trying to sell me some microphones. Are you missing some? Exactly. I've got them. Rich took the initiative to return the stolen goods and ensure the young perp was nabbed. Talk about a comeback story. Gentlemen. Guy with the black hat. got the black hat on. So it was pretty much like a feel-good movie, only with more microphones and less popcorn. It's spot on. I mean, good call him out, for sure. He's on the right track. He took a baby step today, but he's got a long way to go till he gets back in my good graces. Let's dial back to the suspense-filled episode Lawyer Up Son from Season 6. Here we see a distressed damsel rush into the store, hell-bent on redeeming a precious gold ring. Now this wasn't just any piece of bling, mind you. It was her mother's, which her son had allegedly pawned at American Jewelry and Loan. I went in to check on my son's pawn ticket. He pawned my mom's ring. Now here's the twist. The ring, just like Houdini, had vanished. No record, no trace, nada. It's not here. It's not there. No, ma'am. Oh, you need to look again. I'm Please. looking at it now, ma'am. It's not here. Nah, oh, this got this some bull because he pawned a $10,000 ring. Undeterred, the woman pressed on about her misplaced $10,000 ring, producing what she claimed was her pawn ticket, and Les, having seen more tricks than a magician's rabbit, quickly spotted the ticket as fake. It's not our ticket. What you mean it ain't your ticket? It say American Jewelry? And it may say that. Though. Now, what the f*** the issue? The issue is, this is a counterfeit ticket. Now, f*** this f Bet you y'all gonna pay me for this $10,000 ring. Of course we are. And this is where we tumble into a rabbit hole of possibilities. Now, could the son have given the counterfeit ticket to his mother, covering his tracks after fencing the ring somewhere else? Or was it a cleverly orchestrated heist by the mother and her friend, trying to strong arm less into coughing up the cash for the quote unquote lost ring? And the plot thickens when the ladies storm off, vowing to return. I will be back with my turn. And I'll be more than happy to explain it to them. Y'all full of And they do. But Les, armed with his seasoned pawnbroker wisdom, calmly explains to the lawyer why the ticket is as bogus as a $9 bill. This is what our receipts actually look like. Our tickets do not have this many numbers. These are the amount of numbers that we have. This is the amount of numbers that are here. Okay. Number two is state law mandates that we print the law in a 12-point font. Okay. This is much smaller. Now, even the lawyer had to admit that the paper quality was off. It was like a gripping whodunit, only set in a pawn shop. This is a fake. Now you sad with them? You're not I representing love, us? I'm you representing did. you. If I don't you, get my yeah. ring or my money from them, how you gonna get paid? You brought in a fraudulent ticket. I didn't bring no fraudulent ticket. This you, ticket came You just here. as fake as the mother gave us the ticket. How about that? Pawn shops are sometimes like a wildlife safari. You never quite know what kind of bizarre creature will stroll through the door next. So our next character of interest is a hybrid of delusion and drunkenness with an ambition as clear as vodka. To get his money, come hell or high water. This high volume customer saunters in with a pilfered ring and an attitude to match, proceeding to serenade the shop with his own unique brand of falsetto floor opera. Security was as bemused as the rest of us, trying to decipher his unorthodox negotiation techniques. What the hell is it? 
Call it a rank. I didn't think it was a bus. His responses to inquiries were as smooth as sandpaper, and when asked about the ring's origin, he served up a vague, I just got it. How'd you get it? I just got it. This guy smelled like a brewery. He then demanded a hefty 500 bucks for his stolen bauble. How much did you want? I'd like 500 for it. Why? Because I need it. Yeah, I, I, I get got you. two DUIs, and I got some fines, and I need it. Less ever the gentleman responded that he would have shelled out even more if, you know, the ring wasn't as real as a unicorn's tears. I'd give you more than 500, but it's not real. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Even though faced with this crushing reality, our inebriated friend stayed firm in his conviction, insisting the ring was authentic. I know it's worth $500 and you're going to give me five. Well, actually, if this was gold, it would be worth 2500 Okay, what will you give me for it then? I won't give you anything because it's not gold. And then, as if this absurdity wasn't enough, he boldly asked for the cash anyway, despite his quote-unquote treasure having all the value of a chocolate fire guard. You gotta give me something for it. I can't give it to you, I'm sorry. Give it to me anyway. I mean, you can give me something for it. I probably, no, 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 you can give me something for it. Just don't beat on the glass. And that was the cue for Les to summon the cavalry, and our spirited customer was shown the exit, hopefully to find his way to a karaoke bar instead. I ain't leaving here. Yeah, I am. Let go of me. Let go of me. Let go of me. Talk about a day at the opera. How much do you want for this? I feel it's one in a million, so I'm asking a million. Whoa. Well, you're not going to believe this guy. He walked into the pawn shop and asked for $1 million. What did he possibly have to offer? And let's jump right into it with a rude customer who thinks he knows more than the pawn stars. This coin is really interesting. Yeah, this is cool. Yes, I think I was actually Caesar in a different lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Ilya came to the pawn shop with a coin, but a really special one. I'm coming into the shop today because I have a portrait Julius Caesar coin that I want to sell. I believe it's a key piece to any historical coin collection. I'm hoping to sell it for 4400 but I absolutely love it, so I'm not going to take any low ball off of it. Rick was surprised by the coin. He knew some things about it and its history. One of the neat things is, is where it says dictator on the front of it. That's a negative term nowadays. Back then it wasn't. During times of war, they would they would assign a person the title dictator, mm -hmm. and a dictator had to, would do what was necessary to preserve the republic. Okay, and no matter what he did in office, he could not be prosecuted for that when he left office. Cool. And how things were after Caesar was killed. After Julius Caesar was assassinated, there was a real power vacuum in Rome, and it wasn't until Octavius that basically straightened everything out. The great thing about this is it's a 2,000-year-old coin with Caesar's face on it, and I want it. Rick liked the coin, but he needed to make sure it was 100% authentic and how much it would cost nowadays, so he called a professional to check it out too. Julius Caesar. A few names in history ring with the familiarity of Julius Caesar. You know, there's Napoleon, you know, a few other people you can throw in. His murder inspired Shakespeare. Yeah. I mean, this is a serious bit of history. David had some fascinating facts about the coin. This particular coin was struck within 30 days prior to Julius Caesar's murder. Many historians believe that the fact that his portrait appeared on a coin was one of the things that led to his murder. But Rick wanted to know if the coin was real, so David took a closer look. The strike is perfect. The style is correct. Everything is right. Okay. It's perfectly genuine. All right. So what do you think it's worth? Ilya said he wanted to get 4400 for the coin, but David had a counter opinion of how much that particular coin could cost. When you get a coin like this, there's no shortage of buyers. When they are in fantastic condition, the very best of these have brought in the neighborhood of $200,000 each. But there's a, a good amount of wear. It circulated. And I think this is worth in the neighborhood of $1,500. The seller did not like what he heard. To me, it seems almost so ridiculous that somebody would sell it that low, especially when they knew its history. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm basing it what I'm, on, on what I've seen them sell for yeah, uh, in understand. auctions in Europe and the United States. But uh, the decision is yours. David understood why Ilya wasn't happy with the price, but unfortunately, it's just how it is with things like that. You know, the fact is, these things are undervalued. It's probably best that he holds on to it because the bottom line is it's difficult to replace place for less than its current market value. In his opinion, Rick trusted Dave and was ready to offer the highest amount of money. I'm going to take his opinion. You know, I, I'd give you a thousand bucks for the coin. <laughs> 
Is this a real offer or? That's, that's a legitimate offer, yeah. Ilya was not sure if Rick was joking, but he was sure his coin was worth a lot more. That's not a legitimate offer. You're just using your position here, trying to buy something for below its market value. Rick was not going to offer more money, and the seller wanted more than a thousand bucks. The way market value is determined is if two people agree on a price. If you don't like my price, you don't have to take How it. How about 4000 No, there's no money to be made. So, did they make a deal? Well, no. But Ilya was determined to sell the coin for the amount of money that he had in mind, one way or the other. The offer of $1,000 is absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to hold on to the coin and I'm going to try to sell it to someone else that could actually appreciate its true historical value. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, I'd like to sell a picture of Mary and Abraham Lincoln from, I believe, 1863. I thought Abe only took photos by himself. What are you talking about? Oh, he's right about that. Are you jealous? Mark came to the pawn shop with one extraordinary thing, if the thing is real, of course, and that is a photo of Abraham Lincoln and his wife, Mary. I'm here to sell my 1863 photo of Mary and Abraham Lincoln. I'm a collector of 19th century photos, and this was part of a collection of 11 photographs that were unidentified, and it substantiated the importance of the collection because it had Mary and Abraham Lincoln together. The photo was exceptional and very old. Back in those days, taking a photo was a real sport. It's an ambrotype. You know what that means? Um, I just know that in ambrotypes, it took like 30 minutes to develop, and they had to like be fixed straight with like some... No, no, it was the way photographs were done. The film wasn't as good as it is today, obviously, like that. So it took a long time to expose it. And so they would have hooks on the wall that would go around like that. You had to push your head into them for at least five seconds. It took forever to take a photograph back then. It was really, really expensive. Mark then told him how he got the photo and how much he wanted to sell it for. I bought it from a collector who sold me a collection of 11 photographs that were unidentified. And I painstakingly was able to identify every single one of them and did recognize it to be Abraham and Mary together. And no documentation, anything like that? Nothing at all. How much do you want for this? I feel it's one in a million, so I'm asking a million. Whoa. A million dollars. Now that is a considerable number, so understandably Rick wanted a professional to take a look at the photo and see if it was authentic and genuine. I don't know of another photo of Abraham and Mary Todd Lincoln together, so if it is real, it's probably the only one in existence. Maureen came and got to work. She took a closer look at the photo. It's an amber type, as you know. In an amber type, they enhanced the cheeks and the lips to make them look more lifelike. He had a nose that was crooked, and he, he definitely definitely has one in this photo as well. I have to admit, I know why you think this is Abraham Lincoln, because he has that sort of gaunt shape to his head. Even though Maureen could understand how one would think what Mark thought, she did not come unprepared and was ready to check everything in even more detail. Facial comparison software. Okay. So it actually lays one face on top of the other. They have to be the same size. It resizes them. What's that? It resizes the heads so Because I, I use a caliper and right. I, I, I check the eyes. Oh, but Mark was not delighted with the technology that Maureen brought, but she still tried to show him the differences. That this woman has sort of a uh, different eyebrows. Well, I don't want to be difficult here, but I feel I'm an expert. I look for other things besides just face. I look at the clothes, I look at the background, I check. Yes, so do I. Mark still wasn't impressed, nor did he want to admit that there were some problems with the photograph he had brought. <laughs> okay, it's not a problem. It's your career. You have a right to discredit yourself. So we got one know-it-all on our hands, that's for sure. I know, you think this is worth a million dollars, and no, you, you would like it to be worth a million dollars, and all I'm saying is it's my opinion that it's not Abraham Lincoln. Someone's making a mistake. Yeah, Mark certainly knew how to make everyone uncomfortable. You know what? But I've been doing this for a really long time. Okay. And a lot of people come to me saying that they have... They'll be coming to me in 10 years. I'm honest to God. But hey, at least he got to keep his precious fake photo. We can agree to disagree? Yeah, thank you very much. I All appreciate right. it. Have thank a good you. one. Take care. So what do you think about these customers? Did the Pawn Stars treat them fairly? Let us know in the comments. And until next time, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to never miss our uploads. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.